we love this movie 3000. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Avengers Endgame moments. For this list, we're taking a look at the moments that made Avengers Endgame possibly the most emotional, exhilarating, and epic MCU movie yet. You have fun? It was fun. We would say spoiler alert, but it's the highest grossing movie of all time. We've all seen it. Who told you that? Star Trek, Terminator, Time Cop, Time After Time. Quantum Leap. Wrinkle in Time, Somewhere in Time. Hot Tub Time Machine. Hot Tub Time Machine. Number 10, Hawkeye's Family. You see where you're going? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now let's worry about how you get there. Since Clint Barton was MIA in Infinity War, it's only appropriate that he take center stage in the opening scene of Endgame. Ever since Age of Ultron, we had a bad feeling that the Barton family was headed for tragedy, especially after Thanos snapped his fingers. Our worst fears were confirmed in this harrowing intro as the Bartons sit down to a picnic while Clint sharpens his daughter's archery skills. Although Clint seems ready to pass on the bow, arrow, and Hawkeye mantle to the next generation, his world goes up in ashes when his entire family vanishes. The confusion, panic, and anguish Clint experiences here sets the perfect tone for the film's first act reminding us that our heroes have already lost. Babe! Boys! Boys! Number nine, Black Widow's Sacrifice. Oh, but the raccoon didn't have to climb a mountain. Technically, he's not a raccoon, you know. Oh, whatever, he eats garbage. Having lost his family and ventured down a dark path, Clint is ready to sacrifice himself to secure the Soul Stone on Vormir. If their plan to reverse the snap succeeds, though, Natasha Romanoff knows that Clint's family will need him. The last five years I've been trying to do one thing, get to right here. That's all it's been about, bringing everybody back. Edge of your seat suspense is a term that gets thrown around a lot, but that's the best way to describe this scene as Clint and Natasha race for the cliff. Tell my family I love them. You tell them yourself. Every time one of them takes the lead, the other pulls off a sneaky trick to get ahead. Even after Clint leaps off, Natasha still manages to get the jump on him. As both hang from the cliff, Natasha forces Clint to let go. Please, no. It's okay. As she falls to her heroic and heartbreaking demise. Number eight, Captain Marvel gets back up. Hi, I'm Peter Parker. Hey, Peter Parker. You got something for me? Although Black Widow is gone, the MCU is not at a loss for strong female characters. When Captain Marvel crashes through Thanos' ship, Peter Parker is eager to hand the gauntlet over to her. A battlefield of enemies lies on the horizon, but Carol gets back up from virtually every major heroine in the MCU. Don't worry. She's got health. Granted, it is rather convenient that all of these characters just so happen to be standing in the exact right spot at the exact right time, but it makes for such an empowering and awesome group shot that we honestly can't complain. From Scarlet Witch to Gamora to Valkyrie, each heroine brings something special to this rousing spectacle. The scene may be brief, but could Marvel be hinting at an all-female A4 spinoff? Number seven, aim for the head. With Endgame, the Russo brothers managed to deliver on our expectations while also subverting them. Although Endgame builds to the climactic showdown against Thanos we anticipated, the first act throws several curveballs that have fans second-guessing their initial theories. Let's go get this son of a bitch. Less than a half hour in, the remaining Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy track down a frail Thanos. To their shock and ours, the Mad Titan reveals that he obliterated the Infinity Stones. He used the stones to destroy the stones. It nearly killed me. Making it seemingly impossible to reverse the damage he's caused. I am inevitable. Thanos regrets nothing, except maybe being too hard on Nebula in the past. Before Thanos can repent for being a poor father, Thor literally cuts him off. And this time, he aims for the head. We did not see that coming. What did you do? I went for the head. Number six, Cap versus Cap. That is America's ass. Endgame shares much in common with Back to the Future Part Two, 
as several Avengers revisit the battle for New York. I think it's gratuitous, but whatever. This amounts to several ingenious interactions and callbacks, but the standout moment pits Steve Rogers against his past self. Since Loki was impersonating him only a few minutes earlier... On my way down to coordinate search and rescue. On my way down to coordinate search and rescue. I mean, honestly, how do you keep your food Shut up. 2012 Cap believes that he has eyes on the God of Mischief. Modern Cap is given no choice but to fight his past self, and both can do this all day. I can do this all day. Yeah, I know. I know. As skillfully choreographed as their confrontation is, this showdown also works in the type of humor you'd expect from Marty McFly and Doc Brown's adventures. What do you think? You look great, Doc. The funniest and most applause-worthy moment sees contemporary Cap get the upper hand with a Bucky bombshell. Bucky is alive! <sighs> Number five, he did his best. No amount of money ever bought a second of time. Smart guy. Did his best. Traveling back to 2013, Thor shares a priceless reunion with his mother. I love you, Mom. I love you. Which gives her death in the dark world another layer of emotional weight. As powerful as that sequence is, it's Tony Stark's reunion with his father in 1970 that really hits home. In Civil War, Tony reflected on his strenuous relationship with Howard and how he always wished he could rewrite their final encounter. It doesn't change the fact that they never made it to the airport or all the things I did to avoid processing my grief. This time-traveling mission finally provides him with that chance. While he doesn't reveal who he is... Got a name? Howard. Well, that'll be easy to remember. Howard... Potts. Tony finally makes peace with his dad. Now that Tony himself is a father, he also finds that he has more in common with Howard than he once thought. I have a little girl. A girl would be nice. Less of a chance she'd turn out exactly like me. What'd be so awful about that? Plus, it's always good to see loyal butler Edwin Jarvis. Number four, passing the shield. How does it feel? Like it's someone else's. It isn't. Tony isn't the only one who encounters a loved one in 1970. Spotting Peggy Carter through a window, Steve decides to pick up a couple of extra Pym particles. After dropping off the Infinity Stones and Mjolnir following the Battle of Earth, Steve retires with the woman he loves in the past, rather than returning to 2023. Cap does eventually catch up with his friends, albeit as an old man who's ready to hang up the shield. Only thing bumming me out is the fact I have to live in a world without Captain America. The legacy of Captain America is far from over, though, as Steve chooses an honored Sam as his successor. While Steve doesn't tell Sam about the life he's lived, we are given a glimpse of his touching reunion with Peggy, the two lovebirds finally sharing a dance. Number 3. Avengers Assemble the MCU somehow managed to go over 20 films without ever having a character say Avengers Assemble. Avengers! If Marvel was saving this iconic line for a special occasion, they couldn't have selected a better time. Captain America is ready to charge into a hopeless battle until he hears a familiar voice, as well as some familiar words. Captain Sam, can you hear me? On your left. Seeing T'Challa, Shuri, and Okoye emerge from a portal was already enough to ignite uproarious applause. This scene keeps upping the ante, though, as more portals open, marking the return of several snapped heroes and a few we haven't seen in action for a while. With everyone together, Cap says the two words we've been waiting for. Avengers! Assemble. Thus ensues a glorious climax full of phenomenal action and heart-tugging reunions. Number 2. I Knew It When Cap nearly lifted Mjolnir in Age of Ultron, many of us assumed this was just a throwaway gag and would never be addressed again. <sighs> Nothing. <laughs> Especially since Hela destroyed her brother's hammer in Ragnarok. Even after Thor temporarily retrieved Mjolnir during his trip to 2013, we didn't expect to see another warrior wield his godly weapon. During a rematch with Thanos, however, Thor is nearly bested by his own axe. 
As Mjolnir begins to lift off the ground, it's not Thor summoning it, but rather the only other Avenger worthy of its thunderous power. With his shield in one hand and Mjolnir in the other, Steve teaches Thanos that it's not the weapon that makes the hero, but the hero that makes the weapon. I knew it. I mean, my favorite part of this movie was when they were discussing all the different time travel movies, even though I do not agree with Ant-Man's assertion about Back to the Future. Former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. Exactly. Back to the future is a bunch of bullshit. But anyway, okay, I'm not gonna lie to you guys and try to fool you that we put something weird at number one. We all know what's there, but before we relive that epic endgame moment, let's check out some honorable mentions. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god, it's so good to see you! Sorry, Cap. We can't give you the stuff there. I'm gonna have to call the director. That's okay. Trust me. Hey, Elijah. They'll never know it. Because you won't be alive to tell them. Not quite at the end yet. Almost there, though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. All right, back to business. Number one, Iron Man's fate. The MCU kicked off with Tony Stark revealing his secret identity to the world. I am Iron Man. So, we can't think of a better way to end Thanos' reign of terror than with Tony saying those same four words. And I... am... Iron Man. Believe it or not, this callback to Tony's defining line was added at the last second. Although Tony snaps Thanos and his armies out of existence, donning the gauntlet comes at the expense of his life. Tony summons what little strength he has left to bid his friends and allies farewell, with Pepper giving him permission to rest. We're gonna be okay. He can rest now. As his loved ones gather at his funeral, we're reminded that Tony Stark not only had a heart, but was the heart of the MCU's first three phases. I love you 3,000. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.